there really was no relationship between the U.S. and China until the Nixon-Kissinger visits in the early 70s. And then the really huge change took place in 2001 when the U.S. supported China coming into the WTO, the World Trade Organization. And from that point on, the, the relationship was very much a win-win. So trade exploded between the U.S. and China. What I'm talking about is China obviously leveraging its low-cost labor was the beneficiary of a huge increase in its export trade. The U.S. was also a winner because the U.S. was able to stock its shelves with much lower cost, high quality goods from China that enabled the U.S. to keep down inflation. There are people who will point to the job implications of that, which is real because it did lead to a shift of jobs from the U.S. to China. But we could always go back and debate whether the job sacrifice of the U.S. side was more than compensated for by the impact of holding down inflation. But that first era was generally a positive one. If you go to era two, which is really uh, under Trump's leadership, what happened was, you know, from my perspective, he totally misread the realities of COVID, dismissed it as a common flu that would ultimately go away, that was being overblown by many others. So he wanted to divert attention away from that. And he decided uh, to basically make China public enemy number one. It became a politicized issue, and both the Republicans and the Democrats adopted it and the media reinforced it. And that led to what I would call the era of where there was really virtually no communication during COVID. I think what ultimately happened is cooler heads prevailed, and it became clear to both the Chinese leaders and the U.S. leaders that constantly attacking the other side, as opposed to getting dialogues going and looking for common ground, was not the right answer. So we had the visits of Yellen and Blinken to China. We had the summit between Xi and Biden. Out of that came some very constructive uh, initiatives. One was a, a commitment to basically look at opportunities to improve communications on both sides and create win wins. It's still in the early stages of the third stage. But I think the rhetoric has been very constructive. You know, if you go back to the end of the second stage under Trump, there was a lot of discussion about economic decoupling. And I think both sides discovered the same thing. The inner links between China and the U.S. on trade and on many other dimensions are far too extensive and far too important for both countries for decoupling to ever be practical. I think another lessons learned that I'm not as sure fully accepted in the U.S. is the U.S. just has a very poor understanding of who China is and how they became who they are. So it's very difficult to negotiate and develop a longer term relationship when you don't have a basic understanding. And the barriers to understanding are not surprising. And then finally, there was very little personal interaction between the two countries, which was largely a U.S. issue. And if you look at the student population from China going to the U.S., in its heyday, it was 300 to 400,000 students a year. That number on the U.S. students going to China was never more than 10,000 and is today down to 500 per year. So when you have a complete lack of communication, it's very difficult to get to know the other side well enough to feel comfortable that you can create a win-win. And then looking forward, I think the final initiative that would make the most sense is just more people-to-people exchanges. We're already starting to see it with leaders of government. We're seeing it in the military. We need a lot more on the business side. The people in America who deeply understand China 
are the business people, leaders who have been doing business in China for a long period of time. The relationship, you know, has gone through these three phases. I think it's at a more positive phase than it's been in the past. I think there's much more appreciation that there are many win-wins to be had, and they, and it's worth pursuing on both sides. And, and hopefully we're going to see real progress.